My name is Michael King, and I'm playing there and uh, studio painter. And it's winter time, and I love snow. It's difficult to paint, but I really enjoy the challenge. I'm back in uh, the Meadows to another location that I know. And if you ask why you're coming back to a location you already know, and it's like generally it's because I'm comfortable with it. And snow is something that just adds to the challenge. So with a comfortable subject, I'm confident that I can get it done and the snow I can play with and then I can see the see the result. That's my rationale anyway. Besides, it's just beautiful country. I mean, look at this. We swing the other way and we have all the mountains. Now that's amazing. So I'm going to scout a location, get up my view catcher, see if I can find a good composition here. It's mostly going to be a, uh, either an 8x13, 6x8 or 6x9 and 3 quarters. Something in that format. We shall see. Cheers. So in terms of composition, this is what I'm thinking. More of the elongated, maybe a six by nine and three quarters. I chose that dimension just because it's the golden mean, but just because it's the golden mean doesn't mean it's going to make a great composition. What I like is how that lower land mass brings you into the painting, and hopefully we can make the transition over the ice to the other land mass up top, and over back to the left and back down again. In the meantime, the snow at the very top prevents you from leaving the top of the scene. And the ice is a different color on a peninsula than it is on the water itself. I think that'll work nice. Let's, uh, let's get started. Now the sketch I aim to keep pretty simple. Um, I'm just looking through my viewfinder here. If you're interested in a view catcher, link in the description below. And while I sketch, I'm not just looking at the positive shape of the land masses, but I'm also focusing on the negative shape that the ice creates between all the land masses. I'm trying to make decisions between the two to make sure I don't have any you know, equal spaces throughout. I'm making sure everything looks random, a little more natural and chaotic. Now the first thing I want to do is try to establish my values between the frozen water and the snow. With this value that I'm putting down, I'm kind of actually comparing it to the white of the board that I'm painting on, thinking that that can represent the ice on the peninsula. So I'm squinting and comparing values at every opportunity I can, and I try to put it in probably a little bit darker than I intend to. Worst case, I can always lighten it up. Moving up onto into the snow now, and some people ask me if my paints get too stiff when I'm out painting in the cold, and you know what, I, I actually really like how stiff they are. You can really get a sense of brush strokes, I mean, I mean, look at that. That texture in itself is worth painting in the cold. The last part of the block in is just putting in the value for the snow in the peninsulas. If you squint, you can see that the value I'm putting down, although it has a little more blue chroma in it, it's not much different from the white of the board in itself. It just looks brighter because of the blue chroma in it. The value itself may be slightly darker than what's there in the white, but it'll allow me room to push any bright spots of snow that I do find. I'm just bringing in more snow with on the ice there just uh, created a little sense of variety i mean the ice isn't just a big sheet of ice it does have many dollops of snow on it as well and now just putting in some shadows along those land masses just where the uh, edges of the snow cast a shadow where there's a form shadow in itself Here I've started using a bristle brush to bring in some temperature variety into the ice as the bristles really provide a nice texture within that thin paint. You can see adding this slightly cooler mixture to the ice really starts making it colder and uh, more suitable to the environment. And with the ice and snow laid in, we can start moving into the dry grasses and we're just mixing a, you know, a dirty ochre greeny mix laying in the clumps of grasses on the land masses themselves.
Now, although I am trying to paint what I see, I am more focused on creating a random pattern more than anything else. Moving in with a little more vibrant, lighter mixture for the grasses that I see in the back landmass. Now for the fun part, just putting in the, uh, the long, tall grasses that's overlapping the landmass and the ice and the back snow. These overlapping grasses will help create the illusion of depth within this painting. Now with the darks and the mid-tones completed in the grasses, I'm starting to go into the lighter tones of the grasses. Kind of get the light to dance off them. Now I don't go overboard on this because it isn't really a sunny day. Now adding in some deeper dark for an additional sense of depth. In the upper back snow, what I'm doing there is just adjusting the temperature within it. Adding some little bit of cooler greens, warmer blues, etc. And now focusing more on the snow, adding a light touch where the light is coming through. Trying to give us a, a little sense of depth in there, a little sense of variety. I mean, with the darks, you do have the lights. I'm trying to be strategic with it because if I put in too many lights, it's going to take away all the shadow. And one of the things that I love to do is to scratch within my paintings. And these grasses are perfect for it. And with it, I decided to sign a painting. However, I go back just because I didn't like how those foreground grasses were shaped. So I had to go back and mix in some of the uh, lighter values of snow. And bringing the snow into the grass masses just helps let it sit down in the environment a little bit better. They seemed a little bit too static and blocky before. So sometimes even when you think it's finished, it's always good to go back with a fresh eye and see what you missed the first time. Well, as cold as it is, that was a really fun scene to paint. The difference between ice and snow is very different, not only in value, but in temperature. One can be slightly just a tiny bit warmer, one can be a little more cooler. Whether it's a cooler green or a bluer green, uh, it just makes all the difference. And then the values, depending on the depth of the ice um, and the reflection on the water itself. Just those small subtleties, they're the key to a successful painting. So this is a good study. Maybe I can do something larger in the studio, I don't know. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. If you want to be notified of all my videos, hit that bell as well. And you can also find me on Patreon, patreon.com slash Take care, everyone. Cheers.